Okay, I've been asked to make an Inkscape video starting for, from scratch for someone that doesn't know anything about Inkscape. Basically, just the basics of Inkscape. So, Inkscape is a free, open source vector graphics program available for Linux, Windows, and Mac operating systems. You can download it here at Inkscape.org. Once you get here, go to the download section, current version. It's automatically, as you can see, redirected me to the to the best download for my setup. But you can also go back here to Inkscape 1.2.2, which is the newest version. And you can go through these options. You can pick Linux, Windows, Mac, operating system, whatever you have. Select your platform. Select your architecture, whether you have a 64-bit or a 32-bit computer. Mine's 64-bit. And then you come here, you have an option of an EXE format, a Windows installer package, or a compressed zip archive. I generally go for the Windows installer package. So you download that, install it, follow the on-screen prompts, just go with the defaults, no sense in messing with the settings, just install it. And once you have it installed, you will have an icon on your desktop, desktop you know, for Inkscape. You can double-click that. To open it up or you could right click it and hit open but just double click it it'll open up okay so now Inkscape is opened up it's a new window and here is your your screen now I'll just do a quick run through of what everything is up here is your menus bar the next line down is going to be your command bar it's where you'll find things like print save open uh, copy paste and your next line down is going to be your tools control bar the tools control bar is going to be directly related to what tool you select from over here which this on the left here is your toolbox down on the bottom you'll see this selection here with all these colors this is your color palette below that is your status bar this is an important place to watch when something doesn't go right it'll give you messages down here letting you know and a lot of times your solution is being hinted to you down here so keep an eye on that when something doesn't go right over here to the right this is your dock and this is where you know uh, extra functions when you come up here to the menu and select something like path uh, path effects you'll have options within that which the path effects First, you have to have select a path, so that wasn't a good example. I'll go to Object, Align and Distribute. Now you see over here all the options of my Align and Distribute function have opened up in the dock. So that's what this is going to be over here. Over here on the far right, you have your snapping tool where you can toggle your snapping on or off. And you hit this arrow here, it'll open up. These are the options for snapping. So that's a basic overview of your layout here. Now you have Inkscape opened up you're going to want to start working with it creating something so you can either go here to file and you can choose open or import and you can open a file up so like this I will just pull in a file okay now I've opened a file up or you can alternatively if you hit open it will open a new window this is a separate basically a new instance of Inkscape if I hit import I can pull an extra design into this same window I'm using here. So anyway, that's you can either open a file up, I'm just going to delete those, or you can start creating a file. I also forgot to mention this main area here, your main part, this is your canvas, and this part here, this is your page or document properties. That's the where your actual design will be. You can resize this. I generally wait until the design is finished and then you have an option under here file document properties resize the content if you select the design you've made and hit this option it will automatically resize it to fit the design you've made so I don't mess with that until the designs made because I don't know a lot of times what my end results gonna be okay so you can either open a file up to work with it or you can create a new file I'm just going to just for the sake of this being brand new, I'll just make a very simple file, just something to get started with. So you have your tools here. This is your selection arrow, your nodes, edit nodes by path tool, 
square tool, your circle tool, your stars and polygons tool. This is 3D boxes. I generally don't use that with 2D CNC design. Your spirals tool, your bezier tool. This is a very good tool for tracing out objects and photographs that you bring in. Your draw freehand tool. It's similar to the bezier tool, but it has some different functions. I prefer the bezier tool and your text tool. Those are the main things you're going to use when creating a design. The stuff going on down here, this is more for graphics, you know, gradients, uh, meshes, not really something you're going to use for 2D art design. So let's just start and make a really simple file. I'm going to come up here to the square tool and I'm going to draw a square. Now my fill color is off because the last time I used it I was working in stroke with no fill. You can come down here and select a color. I'll pick black. And if you hold shift and hit X, that will turn that stroke color off. If you don't hold shift and select a color, that operates your fill color. If you hold shift and select a color, that's your stroke, turning it on or off or selecting a color. Okay, so I've drawn a box here. Now let's put some text in it. So I will go to my text tool, click anywhere on the screen, and I'll just type out welcome not even really concerned with what font it is now I will scale this up I'm gonna change the color to white by clicking down here in my color palette now that's white so I can see it and I will bring this up here uh, it looks like my spacing for some reason always wants to default to a really huge number I would start out with zero and you can adjust from there if you need a wider gap between your letters and we'll just scale this up we're just gonna make a art deco looking welcome sign here so there's my font and I've got I'm gonna put it on this box now the first thing I want to do is align my font to center here so if I hold shift the fonts already selected I click on it if I hold shift and select this box now both items are selected or alternatively you can just click and drag a box around it like that by left clicking then I'll come over here to my line and distribute tool this tool you have multiple options like here I always use last selected so I know that the last item I selected is what is going to be aligned to you can also go with first selected you can align to the page to the drawing multiple options I go with last selected so now if I hit this center on vertical axis and this center on horizontal axis, that will center my font up perfectly in that rectangle. So now my font's centered where I want it. If I select the font, I can come up here to path, object to path, and that converts, that is no longer a text, that's now a group. As you see down here in the status bar I mentioned, that is a group of seven objects. Now you can't union or difference a group, so you're going to want to ungroup that. So you can go object, ungroup. Now I have seven paths, seven objects selected of type path. Now I could union those, and actually in this case I will go ahead and union those. So I'll hit Shift Control Plus, which is a keyboard shortcut, which is the same as path union. And I often have people ask. Do you have a list of shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts? When you go to any of these menu options and scroll down, over to the right you'll see these. These here on the right are the keyboard shortcuts for that particular command. So if you want to know the keyboard shortcut for trace bitmap, it's Shift Alt B. If you want to know the keyboard shortcut for ungroup, it's Shift Control G. So it will tell you the keyboard shortcuts here on the right. Until you get familiar with them, you'll probably just want to go up to the menu and pick your, your function. And they're very handy once you get familiar with them. So I've converted this to a path. I've unioned them all together. And I want to add them to this rectangle. But before I do that, with font, you want to look. Any, any letter you have that has a center, like this, this O, this center will fall out if I don't add a bridge. So you want to come in here, I grab my rectangle and squares tool, and I have my snapping turned on. When it's not turned on, it's not 
snapping anywhere. When I turn my snapping tool on, you can see that rectangle is snapping to the edge of that. And I'll pull me out a rectangle here. Now when you're making a bridge, you want to go minimum eighth inch if you can get away with it. Sometimes if you're working with really small text or features, you can't quite get an eighth inch, but I generally go for at least an eighth inch thick. That way I know it's strong enough to hold in there. In this case, these being bigger letters, I would probably, I'll go with 200 thousands. That will be plenty strong and it's not big enough that it takes away from the look of the O there. Now I can change that color to black and then you can see what that bridge will look like when I add it. And that bridge will add a tab there to hold that center in. So now what I'm going to do, I've got my bridge ready. It's aligned where I want it. I click on it and then I'll click on the font or the path there and hit path difference. That will now, that cut that out. So now I have a bridge here that will hold the center of the zero in or, or O, sorry. So now this is a solid path. It's been bridged. There's no centers that will fall out. The last thing to do is select the rectangle and I'm gonna go up here to path difference and difference that out. Now, if I come over here to my edit paths by nodes tool and click on the design, you can see that's all one path now. There's no, there's not two separate paths there, it's all one path. The last thing to do here would be node reduction. When you're in your edit paths by nodes tool, you can come in and you can drag a box around multiple nodes at a time, or you can select just one and delete those extra nodes by hitting backspace on your keyboard. In this instance, I would select those two and use this make selected segments lines and that will snap that as a straight line. And I would just go around this and select any extra nodes and delete those. And then when you're done, you can highlight these nodes. And these, since they're on a curve, you can use this make selected nodes smooth, smooth those nodes out, and then you can grab the handles on them and you can readjust them slightly just to any deformation it did there you can straighten that back up the less nodes you have on a file the cleaner it's going to cut on most tables because each one of these nodes is a control point your software has to go to before it proceeds to the next point so the least the less nodes you have the less control points it has to go to the cleaner and the smoother it'll cut so you work your way around oh, I'll turn my snapping back off work your way around and adjust these Minimize your nodes. Uh, see, I get rid of that one, that one. Uh, maybe leave those two. Uh, it's kind of preference when you go through these. I hit Control Z to go back. Anytime you do something you don't want, you can just hit Control Z or Edit Undo, and you can go back. Um, let's see here. I'll do this one and this one, and probably that one. No messed up again I'll do that one anyway you can play around and you'll you'll get the hang of it and don't I think people are a little afraid to delete things because they're afraid they'll screw something up like I say control Z is your best friend you can go back on anything you do if you make a mistake and you can fix it but reduce the nodes as minimal as you can and still maintain the proper contours there once you're done reducing your nodes, as I said, you can adjust this document property. It doesn't really matter for CNC cutting, but some programs it does. So you'll want to zero this out by going to document properties. That will open up this window and you can select this with the path selected. And that just resized the document to fit the path perfectly. Once you're finally done, this design is done. I can send this to my CNC to cut. I'll want to come up and file, save as. I always save as an SVG. So I'll hit, uh, we'll call this sample. And I'll save that. 
and then I also normally save as and come back in here this time I'll drop down and select desktop cutting plotter DXF R14 save that and this will pop up an extra window I always use L polyline inches for the base unit Latin and this you just leave those alone hit OK now I've saved a DXF now I can go to my post processing program I personally use sheet cam but whatever post processing program you're using and now you can open that file up and apply your cut operation so that is hopefully a quick to the point uh, welcome to Inkscape hopefully this helps some people out that's just covering the basics um, trying to think if there's anything else I really should cover for just the basics I'm obviously gonna follow this up and I have other videos already on YouTube but I will follow up with going more in depth on certain menu items because if I went all the way into everything this could drag out for hours literally like just path path effects just this one option alone when I hit plus here you'll see it has so many different options that you could burn up an indefinite amount of time trying to explain each one of these so I'm not gonna go in depth on all this stuff right now but that gets you started from installing the program to opening up a file or creating a file saving the file that should get you going the one other thing I will mention here I'm gonna now close this I've saved it I'm gonna hit close without saving I'm not really worried about that anyway when you're working in Inkscape, everybody wants new fonts. A great source of new fonts is Defont. You can come here to Defont.com. You can scroll through an unreal amount of fonts here. Pick ones you like. Look for ones that look like they'd CNC cut better. Um, but pick fonts you want. You can download them. Once you've downloaded those fonts, you can install them first thing you are want to do when you download a font I've downloaded this is you're going to want to right click on the font and hit extract all so now that's going to extract that to a new folder and that unzips it now that this is un this is extracted I'll go back to the folder so you can see this was the zip folder I downloaded now this is extracted and unzipped when I go in here now these are the fonts I want to install you'll select those and this is the important part with Inkscape you hit right click show more options with Inkscape you want to always use install for all users if you just use install it won't show up in Inkscape use install for all users that will install that font which I've already installed it but so I'll just hit no That's for both of them so I'll just hit no but I've already installed these once you've installed it for all users then if you have any Inkscape windows open you'll have to close them and then restart Inkscape then that font will show up so hopefully that gives you a good starting point for Inkscape there's a lot to learn it's a great program don't get frustrated with it stick with it Inkscape is excellent for CNC design but it, it takes some seat time and some practice to get used to it hopefully that helps some people out thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe